Smith, I'll be your moderator for this class session. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of His eternal purpose pattern and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Since that time, we have established branch schools throughout the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word, our Son, and the Holy Spirit as contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. This has been improperly substituted with Lord. The true title of the Word, our Son, is Elohim. This has been improperly substituted with God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. This has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language the Greek language nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that's made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1600 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We've drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. 
Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state took on shape and took on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the word or son. A super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preference of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by divine pattern of the universe. It is called divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel up out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern and a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consisted of a most holy place, holy place, and court roundabout. These three compartments make it up the one tabernacle power. We go about in this school to show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. We have ten primary aims or constitutional objectives of the Institute and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sect, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, a so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, both modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to escapate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation in faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is none other name given among men whereby man can be saved, Save it in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Slogan, speak the truth. We'll have prayer by Sister Jessica Forsythe. Our scripture lesson is Exodus, the 25th chapter, read by Sister Kathleen Banks. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, let's bow our hearts and minds. I pray that um, Yahshua gives us the, the knowledge and understanding of what we're about to learn today. And let us pray for the brethren who couldn't make it. And also want to pray for the brethren who don't know the name yet, who just haven't made it yet. Hallelujah. And uh, with these few words, I'd like to say, to say hallelujah. 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 Good morning, class. Good morning. I'll be reading Exodus 25th chapter taken from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments critically compared with <coughs> ancient authorities and various manuscripts 
revised by A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association, Incorporated. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they may bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart, ye shall take my offering. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them, gold and silver and brass, and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair, and ram skins dyed red and badger skins and shitten wood, oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense, onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the a pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. And they shall make an ark of shittim wood, two cubits and a half the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, within and without shalt thou overlay it, and shalt make it a, a crown of gold round about. And thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it, and put it in the four corners thereof, and two rings shall be in the one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. And thou shalt make staffs of shitten wood, and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put the staffs into staves. the rings, and thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, that the ark may be borne with them. The staves shall be in the rings of the ark; they shall not be taken from it. And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold, two cubits and a half the length thereof and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold, of beaten work shalt thou make them, in the two ends of the mercy seat. And make one cherubim on one end, and the other cherub on the other end. Even of the mercy seat shall ye make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings. And their faces shall lock one to another. Shall look. I'm sorry. Shall look one to another toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony. And of all things will I give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Thou shalt also make a table of shittim wood. Two cubits shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, and make thereto a <coughs> crown of gold round about. And thou shalt make unto it a border of a hand breadth round about. And thou shalt make a golden crown to the border thereof round about. <coughs> and thou shalt make for it four rings of gold, and put the ring in the four corners that are on the four feet thereof. Over against the border shall the rings be for places of the staves to bear the table. And thou shalt make the staves of shitten wood and overlay them with gold that the table may be borne with them. And thou shalt make the dishes thereof and spoons thereof and covers thereof and bowls thereof to cover withal. Of pure gold shalt thou make them. And thou shalt set up on the table shoe bread before me always. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold. Of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. Its base, its shaft, its bowls, 
its knobs and its flowers shall be of the same. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it, three branches of the candlestick out of the one side and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. Three bowls made like unto almonds with a knob and a flower in one branch. And three bowls made like almonds in the other branch with a knob and a flower. So in the six branches that come out of the candlestick. And the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almonds with their knobs and their flowers. And there shall be a knob under two branches of the same. And a knob under two branches of the same. And a knob under two branches of the same. According to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. Their knobs and their branches shall be of the same. All of it shall be one beaten work of pure gold. And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. And the tongs thereof, and the snuff dishes thereof, shall be of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was shown in the mount. Exodus 25. This morning we're going to begin our lecture today with uh, a testimonial time. So anyone who have a brief testimony can come and do that now. Good morning, class. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I just firstly want to give Yahshua the Messiah all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for him delivering me back home to Memphis. I've been in Texas now for two years, and it was just time. My time had expired. It was just time for me to get on down and come back home to Memphis. And uh, y'all, through it all, Yahshua has been, it's been a long, hard, rocky road. But Yahshua the Messiah is the rock of my life and the road to my salvation because he is able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, y'all. Good, Good morning. morning. I uh, want to thank Yahshua for showing me. I've been gone for nine months. So when I came back, he just welcomed me with open arms. Hallelujah. You know, it was like I didn't miss a beat. But he's showing me more, you know, in the world and what's going on. And I can decipher right from wrong Hallelujah. using his pattern mm -hmm. and his plan mm -hmm. and what I've learned in this class. And it's amazing to me. I spent years in churches, years, trying to fit, figure out where I fit in. And I did not learn nothing. The kids treated me worse. The parents were just worse, as, just as bad as the kids were. So when I finally heard that name, it was like I know that name from somewhere, like I already had it inside of me, but didn't know who it was yet, you know? And I know that sounds kind of crazy, but it's true, because when, when I was first told that name, it's like I, I felt comfortable with that name, and it made the Bible make sense. Like the, the, the misconstrued names and titles that are used, I used to always think that in school, like... A God, which God? You know, because the the Egyptians have a thousand gods for everything, and there's like a whole closet full of gods. And why would you put the Creator with those gods? It never made sense to me, and I didn't know why I was questioning it, and it didn't make sense until you know just a, a few years ago. So it's it is it's amazing how far you can go with that name, and and how much I see. Like, I don't just nitpick what other people are doing, but I can see how that name being wrong causes, like, a, a snowball effect. Like, it just goes on and on and on. And I'm grateful that he let me know his name, because it wasn't nothing but him. You know, I could have heard his name and kept on going, mm -hmm. just like a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. 
but it just it, it caught me and it, it made it just made sense yes and he just told me no matter what he's not gonna let me go as long as i don't go so i'm just i'm grateful to be here Our first speaker for this class session will be Dr. Olivia Dobbins. I'd like to say good morning. Good morning. And uh, it, it is an honor and a privilege to uh, be able to have any kind of reasonable testimony <coughs> about uh, the things that Yahweh has revealed unto me. Uh, first off, I am going to call Dr. Jackie Ely on and apologize for the door being shut <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and not answer the phone uh, uh, so that uh, she went on back home. I don't don't want to do things that discourage people mm -hmm. when they mm -hmm. when they make an effort to come mm -hmm. out and be be among them. So just know that she did want to be among us today. Um, as I had texted out, um, have you ever, um, let me give you a Romans 119 and 20, have you ever gone to, uh, seen something like a sale flyer and it say, you know, 50% off on, you know, sweaters or blouses, you know, so you got the flyer, you know, and you, and you go to the store and then you get the hokey doke. You know, they really do it to you with cars. You know, <laughs> bait and uh, yeah, bait and switch. <laughs> and they call that false advertising. Mm -hmm. And and you can be penalized mm -hmm. for false advertisement, which means you, you're saying something and then you're not delivering on it. Right. And uh, they almost hate to see me come up there in the right age. You know how they always holler out, welcome down. They be, they be mumbling when I come. <laughs> Cause you I take a picture. Fan. No, I take a picture of the thing and it says, uh, buy one, 50% off, or buy one, buy two, and then get them half price. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's never but one mm -hmm. of that item in the shelf. You know, and then when they ring it up, they ring it up for a price. Now sometimes I just go along with it, I don't feel like it. But now I've got, so I take a picture of it and when I come, you know, it's like, okay, here she come with this one bottle and this camera, you know, we're going to have to give her some kind of discount. That's false advertising. It is. So I was thinking, in our moderation, we, it says we go about, see, I didn't want to have false advertisement. We go about to show proof how that everything, help me out, goes according to, goes according to to the tabernacle pattern, this threefold tabernacle, three tabernacle, tabernacle pattern, and, and that absolutely, absolutely what? Nothing, nothing, nothing escapes, escapes the pattern. That's right. So that's what we advertise. So I said, well, you know, Yahweh, that was the thing that got me when I came in, because I knew nothing about the Bible. I could, so therefore, I could not uh, 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 readily prove it or understand it, because I was not a Bible person. But when they started showing me that there was a pattern in operation and that absolutely nothing. First off, you yourself mm -hmm. are witness that this pattern is in operation. So I was thinking, um, when, when you're talking and when you're new and you're talking with people and they say, well, what, you know, in the back of your head, because we all had it, you know, what makes this different? than any other. Cause see, nowadays they got charts and stuff. Oh yeah. And I just saw something last night. It was a beautiful uh, animation rendering of a, t of a tabernacle. So I said, well, Yahweh, now what sets us apart? They got tabernacles, they got pictures. When we went over to uh, Chattanooga one time for the state meeting, there was a full size tabernacle over there. And then the brethren took the tour and we met, we are our own tour guides. The tour guides started listening to what we yeah, were saying. Yeah. They, would, they would give their thing, you know, and then, you know, we would say, now that, 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 that represents the intestinal tract, mm. you know. So they had the um, structure, 
So we say structure and function. And function Okay. But did not have the spiritual implication. They had right. like, well, well, Jesus was a sacrifice, and mm -hmm. uh, I don't even know the whether they could hook it up that the, the labor stood for a baptism, mm -hmm. you know. But there were certain things. He's the light of the world. He's the bread. They had certain things. But we was in there. We was in there correlating. So, how or why do we say that we are different and we are right, and why is this pattern so important? There was a there was a word I looked up. Give me uh, Mark four and eleven, and the vessel. Uh, I believe it when I put the words in her mouth. The true divine original names are the key. They're the key. Yeah. Uh, and then you say, well, not the law and the prophets are the key. Well, then he the key maker. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, the yeah, matrix, yeah. then he the key maker. <laughs> because everybody had the law and the prophets. Isn't that what Yahshua said when uh, mm -hmm. that famous thing about Lazarus and, mm -hmm. and, and the rich man? Right. And the rich man lifted up his eyes and hell and saw a, a Lazarus in Abraham's bosom mm -hmm. and said, Could Lazarus come and just dip mm -hmm. his finger in the wow. water and come and cool wow. my tongue? We knew the old Negro spiritual. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and, and, and Yahshua said, No, he can't because it's a great go. Right. So then he knew he was in hell. So he says, "Well, look, do something for my family that ain't come this route yet." Right. And what did Yahshua say? They got the law and the prophets. So let them hear them. So see, those are keys. But see, if you don't have a key maker, you don't know what. Now, same thing. If some of us look in our pockets. We have more than one or two keys on some of our key rings, don't we? Oh, yeah. And just throwing somebody the key of fire with a break out here, and I just throw somebody a ring with 20 keys. We brought up like that. We need a key, man. If y'all have never been in a situation, <laughs> somebody a coming down the dark street, you try to get in your front door, you clack, 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 you try them keys, you want the right key. So right. Yahshua the Messiah, the name. Mm makes you able to effectively handle them keys okay. to unlock the door. Well, what's the door? Behind the door is a mystery. We see that on all them game shows. What is, what's behind? You take door number one, door number two, door number three. What? It's a mystery. And it has to be open. So get me Mark uh, 4 and 11. The next one is going to be Romans 11 and 25. Mark 4 and 11. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Who is the he? It's Yahshua speaking. Read. Unto you. Mm -hmm. it is Who is the you? Now we know that when Yahshua the Messiah had his disciples, <coughs> disciples we didn't know basically until we got here, they were students. We just said, mm. well, they were followers. They were students. Right. So he kept them close to him and he was telling them mm -hmm. uh, mysteries. He was giving them what they say, gems and pearls. But what about the other folk? There were other folk. Because we can read how that, what is he, he one time he fed 4,000 mm -hmm. with the loaves and the vicious. That's a whole lot of people. Right. But he's making the distinction between the disciples and the multitude. Okay. So it's the same way. We're, and, and we're just, sometimes it seems vanity, but sometimes it's just the truth. Right. We're the ones that have been pulled aside and some mysteries have been revealed unto and not the world. Read. Unto you it is given to know the It mystery. is given. No, you can't wrestle it out. It's given to you. Mm -hmm. It's just revealed to you. It's just made known right within you. Read. To know the mystery of the kingdom of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. But unto them. See the <laughs> us and the them. Mm -hmm. Unto them. Mm -hmm. That are without. That are what? Without. Without. Now, of course, in this, in this uh, age and dispensation, the present kingdom age, you ought to be in the kingdom. So those that are in the kingdom, it is given to know, and those that are without, without. <laughs> ain't got a chance. It's not given for them to know. You, to be in the know, you got to be in. Okay, read. All these things I've done in parables. All these things I've done in parables. So me is speaking it, but they don't understand the semblance of it. It's just, it's just like okay. you're talking in code. Give me Romans 11 and 25. Romans 11 and 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant and of I this And I know, mystery. I put it on myself. Used to say a long time ago. Because see, 
you call somebody ignorant, they they be to snap you. So we say, well, ignorant don't mean ignorant don't mean a bad thing. No, ignorant is from the root word ignore. ignore. <laughs> so that means it's presented, and then you ignore. ignore. And then we have uh, what's this, a willful ignorance. Some people, I'm mm -hmm. running to some people say, don't tell me so I can remain ignorant. I, that, that stupefies, <laughs> that stupefies me. Like, don't tell me, because I won't be held accountable. And it's blah, 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 and run away. <laughs> <laughs> it's something me. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. It's a who? A mystery. Mm -hmm. And we did a play on words one time that that uh, mystery is my story. And I always think about uh, uh, Gladys Knight, if anyone should ever write my life story. Mm -hmm. you no, know, Yahshua is the one mm -hmm. that the law and the prophets were writing his life story exactly. and he came in and lit bb king said he lived a life he loved to live the life he sang about it in his song, song. Mm -hmm. okay read on lest ye should be wise in your own conceit now we're not down here being wise in our own conceit but sometimes what i was doing was i wasn't looking at those shows about the tabernacles to to gain some knowledge because i didn't figure they had it even i was praying not to be conceited or vain about it okay but what i was looking for was there's a mystery with this tabernacle and with these and with these vessels and how they go according to a divine pattern now there's somebody out there uh he's working it i just hadn't had a chance to look at him uh he don't want to use tabernacle pattern and it's like it's sticking his mouth every time he called the tabernacle plan you know it's like he just really emphasized plan <laughs> but uh when we read in exodus 25th chapter mm -hmm. uh 40th verse get that for me oh where you are get that Exodus 25 and 40. Mm -hmm. And look. And look. <laughs> like you tell a child running through, hey, look here. Look. It's an admonition. And look. That thou make them mm -hmm. after their pattern. No, after their plan. After their See, you pattern. can start putting stuff in there that ain't in there. After their pattern. Yeah. See, which was showed thee in the mouth. And it was showed thee in the mouth. So it's that's why. Oh, and, and it seemed like a whole lot of reading. And I said, oh, yeah, we, I forgot it was going to be talking about knobs and branches and this. But see, sometimes mm, we just need to realize mm. it's in there. Yeah, yeah. We need to read the Prego bottle. Sometimes it's okay, yeah, it, it does have olives in there. It does have <laughs> chopped onions in there. It does have a uh, cayenne pepper. You know, so we read it that these vessels is not something that we came up with. It's taken directly out of the Bible. We say that these charts are pictorial illustrations of your Bible. Okay, back in Romans. Lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, mm -hmm. that blindness is happened to be a part of Israel. Okay, now I'm not going to belabor it, but there's a, whole, there's a whole lot, whole lot, whole lot dealing with uh, mystery. Now I want you to get First uh, John five and one. I think it's five and one. First John five and one. Whosoever that okay, is. That ain't. What what I want is, and we know that. He, oh, it's the last. It's the last couple of verses. Five and we know that he is. Yeah, he is come. 1 John 5 and 19. Mm -hmm. And we know that we are Yahweh, of Yahweh. We know that we are of Yahweh. And the whole earth lieth in wickedness. The whole earth lieth in wickedness. So again, somebody say, well, how you how you just stand up there and, and or at the grocery store or wherever talking about you you right and everybody else is wrong. We gotta have the, the uh, I just love the way the vessels in the classes talk about evidence and proof. Evidence and proof. Right. So it is a spiritual thing, but Yahweh has given us a whole creation. It says in Romans 1, 19 and 20, from the creation of the world, they are clearly seen. These mm -hmm. mysteries are clearly seen. And he has shown us how to go in there and reveal these mysteries. Read. 
And we know that the son of Yahweh has come. <coughs> okay, now we're going to, the, the proper translation or proper tense is, is yes. come. Mm -hmm. Read. And hath given us an understanding mm -hmm. that we may know him. That we may know is come. Present tense. Where is he come? In your heart and in your mind. Mm -hmm. And what is the proof of it? <coughs> Read. That we may know him that is true. That we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true. Mm -hmm. Even in his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Okay. This is the true Elohim and eternal life. Okay. I'll look it up and put it on the screen. But there's one that says, and he has given us an understanding. That's what he's given us. The world does not have that understanding. So... When we talk about beginning at Moses, well, why beginning at Moses? I know I sat in class for years, so I'm like, oh, goodness, if I hear one more time, beginning at Moses. <laughs> well, see, that's, that's the pattern. That's the pattern. Because where do we pick up the pattern? We don't pick up the pattern in uh, any of the other books. I could belabor it uh, uh, from Joshua on over to Malachi. It might be a mention about a tabernacle, but not in detail. It's in the book of Exodus. And it's after the children of Israel, Yahweh has delivered the children of Israel. We always say Moses. Moses the lawgiver and Moses the deliverer. But no, that was Yahweh delivered the children of Israel. Uh, so phenomenal. Right here at the burning bush. What does he say for I, I am come down? Mm -hmm. That he might deliver them unto the land of the Canaanites, Hittites. Now look, if we had an a, a eye full of Moses, all we need to do is look at who took them to the land of the Hittites, the mm -hmm. Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Jebusites. That was, now they call him a great general, a great military tactitioner. Uh, it was Joshua the son of Nun, and we sung them songs, Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. Uh, but that was no J for Joshua. That was Joshua delivering them to the promised land. Now if he did it here with Moses, then what should we expect in the spiritual realm? Mm -hmm. That Joshua is going to deliver us to the promised land. What is the promised land? Heaven itself. This is what this was, a type and a shadow of. So, when you go and you pick up this tabernacle pattern, as the moderator has said, this tabernacle, shown it in the mouth. This one we call the intangible <coughs> tabernacle, Yahweh Elohim, just transmuted or transfigured into the tabernacle pattern and told him to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai that he had seen in the mount. Now that knocks out some of the people that I've talked to that said that he learned tabernacle building down here in Egypt. Uh, that Aaron and them learned how to uh, uh, do these works because they worked with uh, making gods down in the land of Egypt. No, because when you read over, when Yahweh's telling Moses the divine specifications for how to build it exactly like you saw in the mount. He didn't leave it up to go find you some people that are good with um, uh, gold work and did gold, did gods in the land of Egypt. He called by name a Bezalel and a Holy Abbot. What was on their resume? It didn't matter because he filled them with his spirit right. so that they could do the cunning work of the tabernacle. So if, you, if, if he filled them, just think about old Peter on the day of Pentecost. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. It was no more than what? Peter. Right. So then if he filled the Bezalel and the Holy Abbot, then what did he do? That was just him working in the body. Of a Bezaliel and a Holy Ab building his tabernacle are exactly like it was shown to Moses in the mountain. Mm -hmm. So we got a threefold tabernacle pattern. That means it's three compartments, three compartments that make it up, but it's the one tabernacle pattern. You got a most holy place, holy place, and court round about. And that was what, what was so beautiful. Because, see, this is really not two dimension. But it's, it's made so, because if this was smaller, you really wouldn't be able to see. Right. But it's still showing you the threefold uh, makeup of the tabernacle. And this 
was just like if outside I had put up a tent and had tables set up for us to have a picnic and then all that grass around that see that would be the court roundabout mm -hmm. and then the tent is the structure but now the court roundabout it had vessels in it and this is what the world this is like you can just go to channel to channel to channel to channel and it ain't vain it's like hey daddy told us something he didn't tell the world they all have an altar they even had the one of the pictures they had little animals out here eating and stuff i guess to keep them quiet at the <laughs> altar. yeah there was one where the man was going around with his thumb and he was putting blood on the four horns i said look at him look at him yahweh just all this pictorial illustration and some had the, the smoke and the fire coming up off of the altar that's right it was square in configuration and once that fire was lit that fire never went out nope. and there was blood put on the four horns from the sacrifice mm -hmm. and then the sacrifice when we talk about that the sacrifice was washed and dressed and, and we always used to laugh about it. That they mean put pantyhose on yeah. <laughs> and a turban. Dress me, prepare for cooking. Right. And then he was laid back in his order. Right. So that means you didn't have a, a leg up here uh, and, and, a, and, a, and a front of, of high leg and a full leg that he was put back in order. The hind legs, the, the torso, and the front legs. Mm -hmm. Everything that was that was suitable to go on there they was put in order and it was and it was consumed here on this altar right now here comes this brazen labor had a twofold function this is a washing mm -hmm. the priest would have to wash the sacrifice then there was times that they would have to take that water out because after you wash a sacrifice wouldn't it be blood in the yeah. water yeah. okay now there would be times when he washed yeah. so they'd have to change the washing so you got a washing of what we call degeneration mm -hmm. or a washing that led unto death because uh -huh. here come Yahshua mm -hmm. to uh, John to be baptized mm -hmm. and John uh, then later after his baptism he says behold the Lamb of Yahweh well what this is the beginning of his ministry yeah. and for this cause came he into the world to die so after the, the baptism comes the death mm -hmm. so here the baptism and the thing is put out here on the altar now there's also a washing of regeneration now this is when the priest after all of this what do we do after cooking and barbecuing and stuff we've been sweating and we're full of smoke and stuff mm -hmm. don't we at least want to take it fresh and freshen our face you know and if we got time we'll even do what freshen up and what change mm -hmm. clothes yeah. and then greet our guests so that's what they do uh, the washing of regeneration mm -hmm. the priest washes up and then he's going to officiate up here into the holy place now this there was only one picture of the tabernacle that had something on there and there was one and I was waiting for him to say it they had a horn hook and it was hanging off of the laver but they never mentioned it <laughs> they said this is step one this is step two and they said that the uh, the door was step three well no it has to be 369 because these vessels are going to point to the nine divine attributes we've got intelligence flanked by wisdom and knowledge love flanked by beauty and justice foundation flanked by power and strength so if it's three in each compartment it must be three here so we got an altar we got a labor and this is what the world is missing the cup of holy anointing oil which represents spirit right. that's the mystery see those spirit. are the little spirit those are the little tidbits that Yahweh see it's not given to them but it's given to you okay. now they had they had one hanging there but they never mentioned they never mentioned it but it is mentioned in Leviticus and and and, and what the priest had to do cause uh, from the very beginning when all of this was reared up didn't Moses have to take and call for Aaron? 
And he got his, he got his outfit on. Give me Exodus, Exodus 40. And get down there where it talks about the uh, uh, the tabernacle was reared up. We made the end of it. Exodus 40 and you want the very end? No, cause the, oh. no, you got to get him where he's calling out, call for Aaron. Okay. Exodus uh, 40 and 9. Okay. And thou shalt take the anointing oil. Take the anointing oil. From where? See, that's the question. From where? It, it, uh, now, now the vessels uh, in Florida, other classes that deal with it a lot, say that it did. It was either on the rim or down here, but it was stored here by the uh, labor. It's where it was. Cause now you think about this. I'm getting ahead of myself, but as I could just hear some of the vessels saying, "You got to prove that." Okay, look. Doesn't this point out the? kidneys right. that wash and filter our blood and uh, uh, pardon me the um, uh, John Oliver was the last week tonight with John Oliver did a thing on kidney dialysis and people talk about how that uh, universal health care, that's only, they said that that's socialism. That's only in uh, Britain, Great Britain and, and Canada, you know, where everybody can have health care, you know, and you get a card. If you're a citizen, you get a card, you get health care. But they were pointing out how that President Reagan, or, or one of them, Reagan or Nixon, uh, made kidney dialysis universal. And once they started doing that, all these private dialysis centers started popping up. Mm -hmm. Every everywhere you look, just about uh, you can go all downtown there in the pinch district. That's dialysis, 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 dialysis. What is that? They have to put you on a machine to do what the right. kidneys does. It filters the impurities out of the blood. So you got a, a filtering or a washing. And uh, the doctors, because we do have, we call them metaphysicians, but we do have medical doctors in our class, classes. And they were pointing out that there's always just a small, small trace amount of blood in the urine. But it's when it gets beyond just that trace, right. then they know that there's a problem. Yeah. So if the kidneys point up to the brazen laver, and then the bladder, because after it filters it, it makes the urine is stored in the bladder. That's like the footstool of the labor. Mm -hmm. What sits on top of each kidney? The adrenal gland. Adrenal gland. And they look like inverted or upside Cups. down. What? Cups. So where's the cup of anointing oil stored? Right. On the labor or around the labor because you are uh, in one way it's like it's like algebra x plus y i don't know but go over here z yeah. that's, that's <laughs> yeah. back up yeah so that's what they're missing and the pattern is blood water spirit give me give me first john uh five seven and eight king james version <clears throat> but there are three that bear record in heaven mm -hmm. the father mm -hmm. the word and the holy spirit and these three are one. And these three are one. And I and I use use this example. We don't know because nobody's been to heaven except the Son of Man that is in heaven. That's what he was telling his disciples. No man has ascended into heaven or descended except the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. And where he is it? He was standing there, but he told them that he was in heaven. So if nobody's gone up there to come back and tell us then we could be an agnostic or atheist. An agnostic just says, well, I don't know because you can't, you know, it can't be proven to me. But uh, there's a record in heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't need to ask you all, have you, uh, have you ever seen the United States flag? I mean, I mean nobody in here can say I've never seen a U.S. flag. Y'all looking like it's a trick yeah. question. No, no. Okay. Everybody see? Yeah. See? Okay. Now, yeah. there's a controversy about the people kneeling and stuff. Right. When the, when the right. you know, flag is brought out and stuff. There's a controversy. Now, the controversy then makes people go and do research to the history. 
and it goes back to the Star Spangled, the Star Spangled Banner by Francis Scott Key. I remember that because you know you take that stuff in music course. That uh, bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that Star Spangled Banner yet wave? But oh my goodness, when they went into you know I knew they were bombing it. Mm -hmm. But when I, you know, you got to go through the mouth of two or three witnesses. Mm -hmm. So I looked it up on two or three sites. The British, y'all ever seen a, a, like Game of Thrones or one of them things when they bring them ships up in there? The, when the British came, he was going to do a, a prisoner exchange. And then right in the middle of the exchange, they said, yes, you can have them. In the middle of the exchange, they came back and said, it ain't going to make no difference. He said, what do you mean? They said, because we're going to bomb that fort out of existence. So there was already American ships, well, the colonist ships, yeah. and the British ships. When he looked out, the sea was full of British ships coming in there. And so it wasn't just two or three bombing the fort. It was this whole, he said, it looked like hell. <laughs> going out, fire and brimstone. And the signal was if they would take the flag down, they would stop. And they, because it was a surrender, they would go in there and they would, the flag would be down. They'd raise the Union Jack, mm -hmm. saying that the British had won. So that's what it's all saying. Every bomb burst, the flag. Well, was still there. Okay. Now, the, I got all well all wound up in that. But the point is, we don't know or not. But don't you know the real flag that took all them hits is in Washington. And you can go and see it. They, and because it's so delicate, it's down, light treatment to keep it from fading. But you can go there and look at it. So now, if there's a record in heaven that we can't get to. Mm -hmm. There's got to be something on earth that we can look at mm -hmm. to tell us about that we can't put our hands on. Right. Right. So we can go and look at that flag and say, mm -mm, it did do that. Mm -hmm. So what's in the earth plane to tell us about the Father and the Word and the Holy Spirit? Three. And there are three that bear witness in earth. Every civics book, in my music book even, my band book, we got a little old flag <laughs> that we stick up there on a stick. See, those are witnesses to the big one in Washington. So the blood, water, spirit is the witness mm -hmm. to the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Read. And there are three that bear witness in earth. Mm, in earth. Mm -hmm. The spirit. The spirit. Mm -hmm. And the water. And the water. And the blood. And the blood. Mm -hmm. And now, the... I'm going to have to go with it like this. In us. Hallelujah. In us. So, the, the, back to Romans. So mm -hmm. that you are without excuse. Mm -hmm. When you go to the doctor, they wanted me to run in there just to take my blood pressure. I thought it was a trick. <laughs> I did. I thought it was a trick. So I was going to be nice and not go mess with them and stuff, you know, because they have to use little small needles on me and stuff. So after she took my blood pressure, she said, you're good to go. I said, oh, I don't have to, TT, and you're not going to draw no blood? Why? Because aren't those the pains? Right. You can go in there for a cough. And they say, here's the specimen cup, mm -hmm. that's water, mm -hmm. and they want to take blood, mm -hmm. and then they uh, want listen. to right. listen to your breathing, right. which represents spirit. Right. And they got to a <laughs> agree yeah. in one. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you don't drink enough water, mm -hmm. are you going to be okay? No. Mm -hmm. You can go without food longer than you can go without water. Yeah. Yeah. You can dehydrate. And see, they can tell that because the urine starts getting more and more mm -hmm. concentrated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotta, mm -hmm. it's gotta, it's gotta agree. Mm -hmm. um, I had, I had a thing. I was out of town. Had, to, I look, I just marched up into the teaching hospital. Y'all got to, y'all got to do something here. I was like the woman with the issue of blood. Y'all got to do something here. It was hormonal. Once they gave me the hormones, told me to lay there, put the towel on the face. The body began to regulate. But after losing all that blood, then they said, well, you got to take what? Iron. Because mm -hmm. these three got to agree in, one. in the one. Mm -hmm. 
So all of that is just so you can say, I don't believe there's a tabernacle. I don't care about no flag. You go out of here and your three in earth, they have got to agree. So that's the outer court. And I just want to do the simple thing. Mm -hmm. Then you got the holy place. You got a seven branch lampstand. We read that. And she said the bowls were like olives. Mm -hmm. His knock. I like the translation because one of them mm -hmm. says his. Mm -hmm. His. The labor and his, his. footstool. The, mm -hmm. the, the shoe bread. And, and in one of those pictures you could actually see them putting the loaves down. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it was already six on the other side. We, I said go ahead Yahweh. Just, just, mm -hmm. a, just a witness. Mm -hmm. Then you got the uh, altar of incense. And they talked about that in some of the shows that it was a stench out here of burning of, 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 of animals. Yahweh said that this would be a sweet smelling savor that would waft up into the holy place uh, onto his nostrils from this stench that's out there. And then a table of shoe bread. So you got one, two, three, one, two, three. Up here then you got the ark and you got the two cherubims, one on either side. Now, before coming in here and after coming in here, if I say family feud, name two angels. <laughs> Michael and Gabriel. And Gabriel. Gabriel. There it is. <laughs> Michael and Gabriel. So we got two here. Right. <laughs> Now we know some of us might have heard of a Uriel and uh, some of the other ones, you know, uh, a Lucifer. Think of a Michael and Gabriel, okay, a messenger and a warrior. And then just to just show how that, uh, well, yeah, you say so. Well, you come over here. This is your brain. Your brain is gray and white, like an unto the cloud. That was here between the wings of the two cherubims. And Yahweh got this thing so tight. Because mm -hmm. uh, you can look at it in the archetype. It's so beautiful. You got the up above mm -hmm. the roof of your mouth mm -hmm. is where your pituitary gland is. Mm -hmm. And coming up off of that, all this bone. Mm -hmm. Then you got these wings that come up on either side yeah. of that. Okay. Making the wings. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And then... When the little ark was put in Solomon's temple, right. it was ten lampstands, ten altars of incense, ten tables of shoe bread, but just that one ark. The original ark was put in there, but there was something in there right. waiting for it when it came. It's just like the moving van bring the bring the bed in, but the dresser and the other stuff is in there. There was something in there. There were great Wait angels that stood. Mm -hmm. Brought that ark in. So you got the greater wings, mm -hmm. and then you got the lesser wings on the ark itself. And then you tell me, absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. You can look it up in a Gray's Anatomy book. That bone has greater wings mm -hmm. and lesser wings, showing you that you got an Ark of the Covenant and that pituitary gland sitting back there. Like we got law written here, that pituitary mm -hmm. gland governs, mm -hmm. is the master gland yes. of the body. It monitors and, regu and regulates, uh, regulates everything uh, since I'm there. Um, the pituitary gland controls hormones. That's physicals. That's physical. You know, um, the um, insulin, that's a hormone. Our testosterone, our estrogen, androgen, however you want to call it, that's hormone. Um, and we've gone through it, the, the endocrine system and all of the, and, and they say that them glands are so small you can just put them right there in your hands. It's like a little, like a handful of little jelly beans. But they control the whole body and the pituitary gland representing the throne of Yahweh controls all of them and tells them when, where, and how to function. Uh, there was a vessel came to our class with Daphne. Um, it's a whole story. 
he came in there because his boss sent him to follow what Daphne was, was Daphne in the car. And he came and started learning something. And then when he went to the, was feeling bad, went to the doctor, they said, you have cancer of the pituitary gland. Well, he just sat here and heard something about it. He said, oh, honey. He said, they said, we're going to, you know, we're not going to have to burrow down through your head. We're going to go through the roof of your mouth. He said, yeah, that's where it's located. You know, we're going to do this. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you won't have to take pills all the rest of your life. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but, we, but we're sure we can get it. Now, he was saying, yeah, 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 because he was thinking of all the people we know that take high blood pressure pills, uh, uh, diabetes, you know, you take the oil, you can take the shots. Uh, uh, people are taking all kind of medicines, you know, all, you know, so he figured, okay, I'm going to have to take medicine all the days of my life. My goodness. He had to, he could not go back to work. And his testimony to us was, it true he wanted to die when he realized all that he would have to go through. Had to have watches, that alarm, had to have alarm clocks all during the night. He had to get up and take this at this time. And then two hours later take this at this time. It wasn't just get up in the morning and take a handful. Mm -hmm. That pituitary gland was regulating different things. Rodney wow. got to get up early in the morning. We're we going we gonna, to we gonna send some hot water over there at 4 o'clock. Now we know Sister Catherine, she need this, this, and this, and this. We're going to do that at 7 o'clock. That pituitary gland, waking up them different glands, getting them going, doing what they need to do. All we're talking about, we are, we are wonderfully made. He had to have a watch and a clock to tell him what to take these things. And people talking about uh, the pituitary gland. It is the master mm -hmm. gland. Oh. But it is physical. Mm -hmm. It is physical. And the physical points to something greater. Mm -hmm. Spiritual. Yeah. And we know that the brain communicates with electrical currents. That's how your memory, that's how your, your nerves work. Mm -hmm. It's electrical current. We saw that. Uh, Thank you, National Geographic, once again, <laughs> for letting us keep that clear. We saw uh, the fertilization of an egg, and we saw the, the, the rudimentary form of a brain coming in, and then I, I was wondering when I was listening to the tape, what was crackling? You know, I thought this, the sound distorted. But when I look back at the show, it was the firing. You could actually hear the firing of the nerves. Neurotransmitters. The neurotransmitters as they were firing in that rudimentary brain. So it is electrical. <laughs> well, you got something that sits up on top of or supersedes the pituitary gland. That's the hippocampus. And that is the intermediary state that translates the electrical current into a code that the pituitary gland can understand because it is physical. So that's like Yahweh giving us a revelation of something spiritual mm -hmm. in a manifestation or a code that we can understand. Take it a natural to explain the spiritual. We are one. Now you see if they say that on one of the programs. <laughs> you just say, yes, Daddy. Yes, Daddy. Roll. <laughs> we are wonderfully made. Now I gave you a worksheet. Let's get to that. A little bit. <coughs> Because we say absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Get that one that's the, got the blanks on it. And there's a, and it's funny how things work. I was doing something at the printer this morning, and that little pamphlet was laying there. And I said, well, y'all, well, this will be perfect. This will be really perfect. And let me show this to the camera. I'm going to put it on the screen. Uh, this is called... A Scientific Introduction to the Divine Pattern of a Mosaic Tabernacle, and it's published by the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. And the center, the centerfold of it, it's not a, it's not a woman, it's, it's a tabernacle pattern, and it's words around it. So, before we do that, let's do this. Let's take our first block of threes, and you're going you're gonna to run it just like the tabernacle. Okay. Okay, now, who had breakfast this morning? Real breakfast. Nobody. I did. I had some <laughs> Anything else? Ooh. I had eggs, sausage, rice, and coffee. Okay, let's on top of on top of that first one. Ding ding ding. Let's do an egg. 
Her egg would be the shell. Okay, the outer quarter of it would be the shell. We have the white. The white. And then the yolk. And then the yolk. Any more parts of the egg? No. It's no. It's threefold. Three parts, shell, the white, and the yolk, mm -hmm. and there's proper terms for it. Mm -hmm. Making up the what? The one egg. Right. That's just a, that's like in court, we call for that witness. <coughs> that bears record to the what? Father, mm -hmm. the Word, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit. So we're going to go ahead and fill in our blanks. Well, we can, or you can just put eggs up, up there and fill it up later. Okay. okay, now, after you had eggs, boy, I love having the bacon that goes with it. Okay? <laughs> now, most of us say, well, the bacon is the, the strip of lean and the fat. But there's yeah. a third part to the bacon. Yeah, sure is. See, capitalism <laughs> yeah, ha has, has realized that there's a market that they can it's take that eat. bacon and make two products out of it. Mm -hmm. Bacon and pork rind. Because the original bacon what? had that rind on it. And most of us with law, you know, that are old enough, you get that bacon, you know, ooh, that rind was tough. <laughs> well, see, they cut they cut that off and that's what they sell us mm -hmm. in the old days, pork rind and pork skin. Yeah. I don't know what that cocoa puffs is. <laughs> now they give us in that bag and say that that's pork, uh, pork skins. It's not, it's cocoa puffs or something. Yeah, yeah. Right, what's crackling? Mm, the crackling them hogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the hogs. So you got the, um, the uh, lean, the fat, and then you got that rind. Mm -hmm. Three parts to the ba bacon. Making up that, that one piece of bacon. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, nice, good. We got uh, the eggs and the bacon. I sure do love some orange juice. So let's look at an orange. Oh. And that's going to be typical of a fruit. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so what do you have? You've oh. got, you got a, a rind around it, don't you? Yeah, right. You got the pulp. Then, and then you got the fleshy pulp. And then you got the seed. And they will say, oh, no, we got a seedless orange. No, it's just like a seedless grape. It's just so small, it's inconsequential. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's three parts. Mm -hmm. The rind, the meat, mm -hmm. and the seed. Mm -hmm. Making up that one orange. Right. You, the same thing with an apple. You got the skin, yeah. you got the meat, and you got the uh, seeds. seeds. Uh, it, 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 see, I know how our mind is. What about a banana? Banana's the same <laughs> thing. It's, yeah. You got that yellow peel. You got that uh, light color flesh. And, and what do you think them little brown seeds. things in there are? Yeah, seeds. <laughs> they're seeds. But they're inconsequential because a banana tree does not grow or germinate from seeds. Romans 1, 19 and 20. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine said, I'm, I'm moving. I cut down my banana plants. Come and get some. I saw this big one, big stump. He said, yeah, that bore fruit this year. Well, what did I think? Because what, what do you think? If you, if, you go, if you go to a store and you buy a plant, they might tell you it's not, it's only two or three years old. It's going to take another three or four years to what, mature. So I figured if the banana plant put out fruit, it's mature. And it was bigger than the other ones. And it was heavy. And he said, you know, you really don't want I said, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I took some of the little ones and I took that stump. Well... I put the stump out and nothing happened. And because nothing happened, I'm the kind of thing, well, forget you then if, if nothing happened. You know, the other ones, I even put in pots and they, they, they bore fruit. Well, I covered up all the little banana bed and next year, from this one I neglected, these things came up and you could tell that it had rotted off ground level but underneath here come these you shoots grow. and they came up bold which let me know they came up off of that stump that's how the banana but i believe it all that because we'll be talking about, no banana yes it does it's got a rind it's got the meat and it's got the seed the seedness the seedness a seedless grape is the same thing it's got them little bitty tiny seeds because if it didn't it's not gonna it fit the pattern you see absolutely nothing escapes the pattern uh, what did he do? On the third day, he calls, he rolls the water back to dry land to appear. Uh, the fruit came in, or the vegetation came forth. 
a C bearing C for after its own kind. If it don't have seeds, it's a hybrid and it cannot cannot bear fruit. They'll have to take and make another hybrid again from some, and it's always they gotta use something that's got a seed to make the hybrid. So you're not you're not gonna get uh, get away from it. Okay, she had oatmeal. Well, when we sit down to eat, <laughs> most times in the old days, we set our table and we had a what? A knife, a fork, and a, and a spoon. spoon. That's right. Okay. Uh -huh. And we eat basically three times a day mm -hmm. breakfast, mm -hmm. or morning, noon, and evening. Breakfast, mm -hmm. lunch, and dinner. And dinner. Mm -hmm. We say, well, sometimes we skip a meal. That's why we're in the shape that we're in. Because they, they'll tell you in Weight Watchers and all them other places, if you ate them three meals and eat in moderation at least those three times a day, your body will get regulated. Well, why is that? Because these three bear record to the true regulator, which is Yahweh himself. Okay, here we come. We're a head cavity, chest cavity, and an abdominal cavity. These three compartments make up the one man, and I got a picture in there. The man is nothing but a stump. He didn't have no arms or legs, but he had a head, a chest, an abdomen, and he was going to school. People was carrying him around to his, because mine was fine because he was in mm -hmm. college, mm -hmm. but didn't have arms and uh, and didn't have legs. And they, they had something on, it's just Yahweh just say, oh, I don't know what she got back there in the closet. But look, they had a, um, a veteran on one of the shows and was talking to him about how do you stay so upbeat and stuff mm -hmm. and this that and the other and uh in in, in in that they were trying to be gentle in the condition that you're in mm -hmm. i thought now i knew right up front he ain't had nothing down here because mm -hmm. you could tell that by the way he was sitting in the chair and his pants was tucked back mm -hmm. so that means his legs was gone right you know this is it was a horrendous explosion he had been in and I thought it was the hand. He said he lost both legs and an arm. So all he had was just this one. Mm -hmm. And he was still getting it <laughs> with that That's electronic true. wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Showing you that there are no organs <laughs> in the arms and the legs. <coughs> they are to transport mm -hmm. the head, the chest, the abdomen. Mm -hmm. And then look at the arms. You got the hand, mm -hmm. the lower arm. And the upper arm. We always talking about you, 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 you. Well, look at the finger. Mm -hmm. The first joint, or the first part, second part, third, third part. Mm -hmm. All of this according to the pattern. Well, what about our legs? We got the foot, mm -hmm. lower leg, mm -hmm. and the thigh. Mm -hmm. These three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. Now, some should go off and I had ding, 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 wherever <laughs> I heard 12 at. Um, the 12 tribes mm -hmm. that so camped yeah. around mm -hmm. the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Now, one of, one of those ologies is astrology. Now, that's different from astronomy, which is the true science of the heavens. Astrology is dealing with all them zodiac signs yeah. and stuff. Okay, but how many signs of the zodiac are there? Twelve. Twelve. Twelve <laughs> tribes. <laughs> Twelve. Twelve tribes. And the, uh, they say that the sun, which we now know the sun don't move, <laughs> but the, uh, it appears in those different, they call them houses. Well, Dr. Rodney always likes going through this. There were the 12 tribes here. <laughs> And there was the um, half tribe of Ephraim and Manassas that made up that 12. Right. But when you count all of these, what tribe is missing? Levi. Levi. And Levi camped Levi. closer mm -hmm. in. Yeah. And we used to have a chart that had the double range. Sure. And he just went through that last week about who all was in camp around it. Mm -hmm. And then you had what? Moses and, and Aaron, yeah. them down mm -hmm. here. 
And then that goes over to that thing about what Ezekiel saw, a wheel and a wheel. Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Is and, and what? Uh, and I saw like the likeness of the throne, and upon the likeness of the, of the throne was the likeness of the appearance of a man, and it, and it looked like lightning and rainbow and all of this. Talking about Yahweh Elo under his feet, <laughs> pay work, pay sapphire stone. That's the same thing Ezekiel is seeing, mm -hmm. and he's seeing the dismantling of the tabernacle. Because when the cloud lit up, what did they know? We could be getting up out of here. And what? The outer ring started moving and the Levi started moving in the inner ring for them going in here, taking down like the vessel did. Each of them had what they had to do in that tabernacle. And then that cloud took up and then they, they and, and then they just didn't say, hey, wait, I want to I wanna walk with y'all. It's just like a yeah. They had a banner. So they, they even marched in mm -hmm. order right. of their 12 tribes. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. when you get into astronomy, astrology, they now mm -hmm. have found a 13th one. Well, we had already done a little pamphlet on that one. They never hardly did talk about the 13th one when I was into that astrology stuff. But uh, now they say that the 13th one is, now it's different pronunciations. O Ochiophus or Ochiophus. And Ochiophus uh, is above the band of the zodiac, but his foot comes down into the zodiac. So they're, they're claiming him as a constant, as one of the zodiacs. Because, see, there's more than just. Um, a Virgo and this and we got Andromeda, we got Cassiopeia, we got a whole bunch of constellations that aren't part of the, that zodiac. But now the Ochiophus, they say, oh yeah, his his foot is down there in there. We're gonna claim him as the thirteenth one. Absolutely nothing escapes a pattern. And it's a serpent. So what did Moses do? He said, what's that in your hand? Throw it down. It was a rod and it became a what? A serpent. He said, lift it up again. And what? When he lifted up that serpent, it became what? A rod again. So Ochiophus is the serpent handler, like Moses was a serpent handler. Absolutely nothing escapes a pattern. Give me another one of ologies. There's a few of them I don't know, but. Thank you. Travel. Travel. Air. Land and sea. Mm -hmm. Ain't no other mo ain't no other mode. <laughs> that song say reach me by trailway, you can you reach me by, by <laughs> caravan. A caravan and trailway is on the earth. Uh by ship, that's sea, or airplane. Time itself is what? Past. Past, present, present and future. future. Then you can get into a perfect future tense, perfect past tense, and I still past, present, future. What about sizes? <coughs> small, small, medium, medium large. Small, medium, and large. Mm -hmm. I mean, Just over. Paper. <laughs> 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 like when you write a paper for school, it has to have an intro, right. a body, and a conclusion. So there it is. Oh. Write it down. I'm running out of space. We're right on the back. Yeah. We'll, we'll run what off you say the um, a school, like a paper, I have, have an introduction, a body, and a, and a conclusion. Right. Okay. Yes, what about the tree? Did you okay. The tree. tree. Mm -hmm. Root, branch. Root. Root. The, the trunk. Trunk. And the branch. And the branches. And what do they call that part up there with all the branches and the leaves? In his glory. They call that the crown. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like the throne of Yahweh. You got any more? Okay. Uh, one of those ologies is, is geology. Say that again. One of those ologies is geology. That's the study of the earth itself. Mm -hmm. The earth itself, we just use this. Uh, it's a core. And it's a mantle, and then we're walking on the what? The crust, making up the three parts to the one earth. Okay, uh, also in geology, you have the study of rocks. You have um, sedimentary, that's a coming down, that's like a sandstone. They say all that, all that sand and silt that's in the rivers, 
uh, when the when the rivers flow slower and slower mm -hmm. and slower, the that stuff starts settling or coming down. Right. Didn't Yahweh Elohim? <coughs> didn't Yahweh come, come down, down into mm -hmm. uh, uh, the condescended into the mm -hmm. manifestation of Yahweh Elohim oh, yeah. and further condescended? Because right. He said, "I and I come down wherever you got me at. I'm come down. I'm sedimentary. I'm I'm down here in the earth plane." Mm -hmm. Okay, you've got one that's called. Um, well, actually, it's the other way around. You got an igneous. I start up here. You got an igneous. What is an igneous? That's that's one that's made by fire, like obsidian, volcano, volcanic glass, made by fire. Okay. Then you've got rock that has changed from one to another, from one state to another. And I think an example is. If you've ever handled sand, sandstone, I did as a kid, you used to sit out there and sharpen our little pen knives on sandstone. But after sandstone is treated with heat and pressure and time, it changes states to granite. So you got a coming down, that's sandstone, that's Yahweh Elohim coming down and then totally transfiguring from spiritual to a physical form. That's like it likes like that granite. And that's what they use to make those buildings and stuff with those granite pillars and columns and things. You looking it up? Igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. Uh, and then that goes to uh, where where uh, I think over there David has said, you know, we talked about where can I go to flee from the presence of Yahweh. Uh, this, the, the, we sung that song. If I don't praise him, the rocks gonna cry out. They will, cause they threefold. Hmm? It's about igneous. It says the metaphor, metamorphosis of igneous rocks. Yeah, it changes from the igneous to another state. Yeah, I'm looking. Okay. This says, uh, metamorphic rocks can change into igneous or sedimentary rock. Mm -hmm. Igneous rock forms when magna, magma cools and makes crystals. That's fire. Uh -huh. Magna, mm -hmm. magma is the hot liquid made of melted minerals, and the minerals form the crystals. Yahweh, our Elohim, is what a consuming fire. fire. It's like that magma in the heart mm -hmm. of the earth mm -hmm. coming up. Read. That was it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So give me, give me another one of them ologies on the little yellow pamphlet. All right, have a biology. Biology. The basic building block of matter is cell, oh. nucleus, yeah. nucleolus, right. cell body. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got biology, okay? Adam? And, and let's see, you got. Um, no, 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 no. Wait now. We're still in biology. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You got um, herbivores. Those that only eat plant, you got the carnivores that only eat meat, meat. <laughs> and you got an omnivore that'll mm -hmm. eat both plant and meat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yahweh <laughs> <laughs> <Now, now> <laughs> got this, got this thing tight. Um, look at the um, animals when we talk about on on day five. You got mm -hmm. the. Um, is it day five? Yeah, you got the bird kingdom, mm -hmm. and then you got the kingdom of the fishes in the sea. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, you got a, a, a amphibious plane. Well, the amphibious plane are those that live part of their time in water mm -hmm. and part of their time out, like tadpoles going yeah. to, to frogs, oh, okay. and yeah. uh, newts and other things become salamanders yeah. and things in their time. Mm -hmm. But when they are newt or tadpole, they're bound by the water. They breathe water. Mm -hmm. But when they go through their metamorphosis, they're, they yeah. are no longer water breathers. Right. They're not an air breathers. But in your bird kingdom, you got some birds that only come down to mate, mm -hmm. and, and it's it's amazing. You got like the albatross yeah, the with albatross. that with those wide wing spans. Yeah. They're soar and soar and soar, mm -hmm. but to mate and to brood. Cause someone talking about they mate in the air, but I know one thing: they ain't carrying no eggs in the air. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the point is, all of their life is they spent soaring. in the air, mm -hmm. soaring. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you have uh, those that, like the emu, 
the ostrich, and, and the cassowary, because it got me three. Mm -hmm. That a land bound. Ostrich got wings, but it can't fly. The yeah. emu got wings, but it don't, don't fly. fly. The cassowary got wings, and it doesn't fly. So that's your air, and your land. Now we got to have what? Water. water. Mm -hmm. So what do we have? We have like, and, we, and we're without excuse, because down there <laughs> off, off of 3rd Street, what is that, Highway 61? Mm -hmm. There's a little town called Lake what? Comoran. 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 That's that bird. Fold his wings back and just, and, oh, it's so beautiful. I'll, I'll do it like he fold his wings back mm -hmm. and make it like a dark and go down and will come up with a, with a fish in his mouth or with a fish in his neck. Even the little even the little duckies that we say, oh, ain't they cute. I watched them one time in New Orleans. <laughs> and the duck stayed down so long, I knew the duck was dead. Yeah, the duck should. had gone down, did what it had to do, and come up someplace else. You know, <laughs> when it was just one, I could kind of figure out, oh, that thing went in there, swam underwater, did what it was going to do, and came up over there. Uh, now look at the ones, uh, even like the uh, penguin. He's a bird. His whole life is spent basically in the water. That's why they're so amazed with the march of the penguin. And they show them great big emperor penguins. Mm -hmm. And then what do they do? They come out, they make, they lay an egg. One part that goes off and mm -hmm. uh, uh, feeds and stuff. Right. And the other one, he I think it said that the males get the first <laughs> round. They stand in there with their big old feet. You know, with, with the egg, egg trying to keep it warm mm -hmm. until the female comes back. Okay, then no. they can go. They pass the egg on, they go. Mm -hmm. But their life, and then we wonder why they are like they are. Because their life, they are built so that, you see them when they hit their water, oh, oh they yeah. are beautiful. Because mm -hmm. that's how they are built as swimmers. Yeah. They're like ducks. <laughs> their legs are way back in comparison mm -hmm. to how other the other uh, bird kingdom are. But the air... Land bound and then those that are in the water. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody mentioned uh, if the atomic atoms, proton, neutron, electron. Now we could get into quarks and this and that. The basic building, subatomic particles, proton, neutron, electron. Because I tell you like this. When they said that about that God particle, I said, Yahweh got some form playing with him like that, that God particle, and, and what all they found in that super collider. Have you heard anybody else talking about that super collider up there in CERN and some more God particles? Mm -hmm. No, thank you very much. Proton, <laughs> neutron, electron. You know, because it has to be proven. Water, H2O, in its gaseous state, is likened unto Yahweh in him. It says it acts in him. We live, move, and have our being. Mm -hmm. Is there not air in this room? Mm -hmm. If it wasn't, you're talking about coughing, we'd be done passed out by now. Mm -hmm. Air in the room, doesn't the air have to what? Be in us? Mm -hmm. So it's saying that that Yahweh that we are in, we are in him, and he yes. is in us. Mm -hmm. And in its gaseous state, we, it, is, it is indiscernible except when it is absent. <laughs> it is. Uh, even the uh, the natural the natural gas and that's a gas. What do they have to do do with it? Uh, so, at Sonny Wakefield's house, that used to be a member of the class, he had a unit that sat in front of his house, and I said, "Well, what is that?" He said, "That's where they put the scent in." See, cause that gas is colorless and it's odorless. Yeah. And yeah, they, they used to say you wake detect. up dead. Yeah, so they have to put a scent in there so that you can, you can detect it. it. So that's like up to Yahweh. You can't, that was Yahweh passed through here. <laughs> None of our senses can detect pure right. spirit. Right. Okay. So what happens? And we like to say, uh, like, like with uh, matter. When you slow the molecules down, then they start changing their states. So when you slow the molecules down of the gas, they start clumping together, and they eventually will form droplets. Mm -hmm. And we talk about how that you could put a glass there with some Coca-Cola and ice, mm -hmm. and water will form on the outside. You can look at it all day long. It's not going to be Coca-Cola. It has slowed the atoms down, the slowed the water molecules down, and they have changed from gas to liquid. You take that liquid and put it in a container, 
and now it becomes it ice. ice. Mm -hmm. So now yeah, it freezes sun. at 32 Fahrenheit. Okay? okay. So if you raise it, see this is the law, the spirit law. Yeah. If you mm -hmm. raise the ice cube one degree, what happens? It's going to melt. It starts melting. It starts transmuting back into that <laughs> liquid state. Mm -hmm. So what happened to Yahshua crucified at 33? Mm -hmm. Right. He's going back to the state from which he was. He said, Father, with the glory that I had with thee before the world was. That's why it says on that road to Emmaus, these are the things that I, these are the words that I spake unto you while I was yet with you. You always say, ain't you, ain't you, ain't, ain't you with him now? No, but in what state? When he was in that physical body, okay. now mm -hmm. he's in a spiritual body. Mm -hmm. He's gone through a check. Mm -hmm. Okay, give me another ology. Um, we got. Uh, but see, I saw one on there. Oncology. We just dealt with that at work. We were calling oncologists. That's the blood. Okay, the heart points up to the ta uh, table of table of shoe bread. Four sides to the table of shoe bread, four chambers in the heart. The average man 160 pounds pumps 12 loaves of bread. Six on one side. I'm not saying that, you know, but the six loaves on this side and six loaves on that side gives you what? 12 loaves of bread. Man pumps 12 pints of blood. Okay. Um, the oncologist so that would be like enough to your circulatory system. You have arteries, veins, and what connects capillaries. the capillaries. capillaries. Mm -hmm. These three make up mm -hmm. your vessels. So let's look at the blood. You've got a red blood cell, which has to shed itself of its nucleus mm -hmm. for it to be any good. Uh, yeah, yeah. So as uh, as as Isaiah the prophet said, in the year that King Isaiah died, mm -hmm. I saw I saw Yah. What is uh, Isaiah? Is us and I. Yeah. And it's the nucleus mm -hmm. that sits there in the center, and we call that mm, she just self-centered. See, so it's the <laughs> nucleus <laughs> there, and it has to give that up, and it leaves a depression. And that's where the molecule of oxygen will ride okay. in the red blood cell. Mm -hmm. So that's like it unto on the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, there was all in one accord up there. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. That's like the blood running in to the lungs mm -hmm. and it's being oxygenated. Now, if it just stayed in the lungs, you'd still drop dead. Mm -hmm. Because it's got to be what? Pumped back pump out and pumped pump through the whole body. Oh, so there they sit in Jerusalem with the Holy Spirit. What about the rest of the world? <laughs> Yahweh turned to heat up with the persecution and they started what? <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's like that blood circulating, circulating. circulating out of there. Oh, no. So the Jew, being the first one, mm -hmm. he was the one that carried that gospel, that mm -hmm. life-giving gospel. That's like a red blood cell. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you have an infection, what do you think makes up the pus? Now, we know some of it be different colors, but, you know, mucus. when it first starts, it's white. Mucus. And it's and mucus and, green. and white, spent white blood cells because they're the warriors. Mm -hmm. And it talks about, when, especially like a, vi a viral infection. See, all that stuff like, and I'm, I'm going to run through it, AIDS. AIDS is an opportunistic killer because it suppresses or kills off the T-cells. Well, what are T-cells? I'm talking about, oh, that's going to be deep. No, it ain't. <laughs> when you call 911, what do they say? How can we help you? How can we help you? Or what is the nature of your call? Mm -hmm. Whether you want police, fire, mm -hmm. Or ambulance emergency. Mm -hmm. so that that, that comes three. three, too. Sure. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so the T... Helper mm -hmm. is like your 911 mm -hmm. dispatch. Okay? Every infection you have that your body fights a fight is just like when they tell, okay, they have like a fire. Did you ever know what makes a one alarm, two alarm, a three alarm? Mm -hmm. Different stations that they call. 
Okay, then they'll say, okay, now they say it's going to be a four-alarm fire. That means they're calling that fourth one. They out there rolling hoses, doing stuff, booting up. And they say, that's okay. Call it off. That's what your T helper and your T suppressor does. Mm -hmm. So what you have is, after every battle, what do we do with our military? Don't they come and they have a debriefing? Yeah. Especially the, the, the big boys that have done all this, they have a debriefing so they get the story straight of what happened and who did what. Yeah. So after your body fights an infection, all of them soldiers, them that's been worn, they die off in the fight and they become part of that pus and mucus. That's, that's your white, that's your white mm -hmm. blood cells. They're warriors. Mm -hmm. they've and they've like, they lost their lives. They've lost their lives. Always two. The law and the prophets Hallelujah. that keep the story. Mm -hmm. And when another infection comes, you can tell that story. <laughs> they get around it and they have what's called a lock and a key. Mm -hmm. And they Locking see what key fits that. Mm -hmm. And then they tell the helpers uh -huh. what sales to send. It's just like 911, mm -hmm. I got a fire. The, the white sales go back, they tell the body, send more of me, more of me. More of me. You talking about matrix? More of me. More of me, so that I can. I'm the one got yes. the key to yes. this one. No, I ain't no sense to calling her. Calling her. I got the key. Call me. I yes. fought, I fought this fight mm -hmm. years ago. I remember this boy. This is Spanish flu to come back up in here. <laughs> so you got them white ones fight. Well, then when you have a cut, why don't we bleed to death? Because, see, that's what's so dangerous <laughs> about hemophiliacs. <laughs> they, they're missing a clotting factor. So that clotting factor, now you're talking about, you talking about tight Yahweh. Um, in the beginning was the word. And, and it's just so many, it's just so much. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with Yahweh. And the word was Yahweh. And the word was made flesh. <laughs> I sat there one morning, I had a nosebleed, I could not stop that nosebleed, I packed it, and I had to go to work, so I'm trying, I mean, I'm getting desperate after, after 15 minutes of a nosebleed, mm -hmm. and you know, you pack it, you try to get dressed a little bit more, you can't go with this big wad in your nose, right. you know, so when you pull it out, it just start again, then you finally do like old folks say, sit down, and try to do something, you know, you put ice, you try everything, you put keys behind your neck, yeah. ice on your face yeah. and stuff, you know, you, you, you lay out and you try to be quiet and the last ball of stuff that I pulled out it was just a glob of bloody stuff come out of my nose and Yahweh said and the word was made flesh because <laughs> where was that if that stuff had been floating around in my vessels that's how, that would have been a blood clot yeah, yeah, yeah. so that which was liquid <laughs> That which was in an intermediary state right. changed form right. and became flesh mm -hmm. for what? Salvation. Yes. So that it might block mm -hmm. that vessel from that bleeding because the life of the flesh, the flesh is, in the is in the blood. Mm -hmm. With those words, I thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> and that's your, third, that's your third part. The platelets are the cells that mm -hmm. make, that, make up part of that flesh. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. I like to say good afternoon to the class. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. I have truly enjoyed um, the things that I have heard, you know, to be able to follow. And that's, that's what was going on, you know, with everybody in class, you know, when she said, give me another one, give me another one. And all of these things that was presented is pointing to our creator the way he really is and actually exists. Before she uh, got off the floor, she was talking about how Yahweh pure spirit. Let's get uh, John 1 and 1 and we're just going to pick up uh, and just um, sort of um, bring it further on down as Yahshua allowed me, you know, to give this because this is so beautiful. When we talk about, you know, showing proof of the existence of Yahweh mm -hmm. and everything that was being done was given by a pattern. So when we was reading over there this morning in Exodus the 25th chapter, 
And um, let's get uh, the John, and then let's go to Exodus 25 and start at, 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 uh, at 8. And uh, we're going to read a little bit, and Joshua will, and, uh, you know, he allowed me to go through this replay. John 1 and 1. And John, John 1 and 1. Now, what we have uh, illustrated on this chart, and the previous Zelda have gone into great detail. So, if you deny the evidence, you deny yourself, <laughs> because that's about the signs of it. It says, now, what? Read. That which was from the beginning. Now, this is First John, Right? One and one. Right. That which was from the beginning, read. Which we have heard. Which we have heard. Mm -hmm. Come on, read please. Which we have seen with our eyes. We've seen with our eyes, read. Which we have looked upon. We've looked upon. Get John, St. John, please read on. And our hands. And our hands have handled. Now all of the, that the previous vessel was working with, she was bringing it from pure spirit to an intermediate shape and form and then bring it on down to the physical. So you got one, two, three, yet what? One. This, all the things that was being presented to you was to show forth that unity and everything is going according to a pattern. So we have an order of operation going on here. Read, please. Come on now. Well, the life was manifested and we have seen it. Now, when she got ready to get off the floor, she was talking about a blood clot. She said, and the life was manifested. So what had to happen to stop that nosebleed, the blood had to go through that what? That clotting, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then in order to do what? To save her from bleeding to death. So then something has to be there to regulate so we won't just get out of here. So he showed that and said, and the word was made <laughs> flesh. So there's your what? Evidence mm -hmm. In the order of operation of Yahweh moving from pure spirit into a description, shape, and form and manifest in the flesh as the Savior. Read, please. For the life was manifested and we've seen it. And we have seen it. Now, these are apostles talking over here. Read. And bear witness. Now, what are we doing? We are bear witness. We have in our physical body, we have the blood, we have the water, we have the spirit. When 1 John 5, 7, 8 read on the front end, so you have the witness within yourself. Like I said, if you deny the witness, you deny you yourself. You see, and the witness is Yahshua. You see, read please. And show unto you uh -huh. that eternal life. That eternal life, read please. Which was with the Father. Which was with the Father. Here we go, read. And was manifest. And was manifest. Unto us. Unto us. So the things that have been shared with us this morning, these are things that was manifest or made known unto us with our physical body in our lives, with our breakfast, our lunch, and our dinner. It was made known by the land and the sea and the air. You know, how we travel. You know, the things that we do. Our very makeup was made manifest and it was all going what? According to this threefold tabernacle pattern. So then when we do say that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern, then everything that was brought, every vessel that had something to bring, even down to writing a research paper, you know, everything that we do, you know, it was brought out, you know. And there are many, there are numerous, you can't even begin to, to, to name all the things that you're going to see that manifestation because everything is Yahweh. Get John 1 and 1, please. Read. John 1 and 1. Read, please. In the beginning was the Word. Here again. Now, see, we're not, we're not telling you anything that's not there. The vessel told you these are pictorial illustrations. That set here before you. And everybody talk about, well, it don't say that in my Bible. And it said this and that. Okay, read out of your own Bible. I DMR, I didn't write a Bible. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. We hadn't published a Bible. When the uh, Vessa got up to read the scriptures, she said, I'll be reading to you from the Holy Name version of the Bible. When uh, Dr. Dobbins was talking, she said, give me 1 John 5 and 7 from where? King from the King James Version of the Bible. You see what I'm saying? But the whole thing in this is that the vision is going to show mm -hmm. you the truth in the Virgin. Mm -hmm. And that's what is happening here. That's what is going to be going on. See, read please. And the Word was with Yahweh. The Word, this self-same Word was with Yahweh. So when the moderator get up here and say Yahweh is pure spirit, 
And she said, we can't, they're talking about how you put this scent in the gas so we can smell it because it don't have a, a, a you can't sniff it out mm -hmm. if they don't put a, something in it to make you smell it. Yeah. So Yahweh pure spirit, Yahweh take on a descriptive shape and form, Yahweh manifest in the flesh. Read, please. And the word was Yahweh. This self-same word that was manifest in the flesh, it said, and the word was Yahweh. Read. The same was in the beginning. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. Read. All things were made by All him. things were made by him. Read. And without him. And without him. Was not anything made that was made. So all of the things that was called out. We had an apple. We had an egg. We had a banana. You know, all the things that were called out was the things that are what? Made. made. It was something that was made. And every last one of them did this. One, two, three, yet one. One, two, three, yet one. This oneness, this unity. That's why Yahweh told, he said, hear, O Israel, Yahweh, our Elohim is Yahweh what? A unity. A unity. He is one. When she held that finger up, you know, one, two, three, yet what? One finger. Went through the whole physical body showing you that unity, that oneness, that oneness. And that's what's going on. Read, please. In him was life. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And this life was the light of men. Read. And the light shineth in darkness. Uh-huh, read on. And the darkness comprehended it not. Read, please. There was a man sent from Yahweh whose name was John. Ten first, please. Was, he was in the world. Now, this self-same spirit, pure spirit, descriptive shape and form, <coughs> manifest in the flesh. He was in the world. And the world was made and by him. And the world him. was made by him. And the world, and knew, the world him knew him not. So now, when you come down here now, and you get to telling people what the true name is, you got Yahweh, it's John 17. Let's read this because we want you to know that this is a unity, it's not a trinity. Mm -hmm. You are a unit. It's not no three of you. You got a head cavity, chest cavity, abdominal cavity, but it's just one of you. So then, if you are made in the image and likeness of your creator, then he got to be what? One, two, three, yet one. You got to be one, two, three, yet one. One, two, three, yet one, one, one. It's just one. There are no three different parts of Yahweh. <laughs> this is Yahweh. It's the only true Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah whom the Father has sent. But what you have is the manifestation, how he's manifesting himself. He's manifested, when the moderator talk about this cloud, we say it's a symbol. It's symbolized right. on this chart. We didn't say it's a cloud. We're using a cloud to symbolize him because Yahweh has no particular or descriptive shape or form. So then it says he takes on this descriptive shape and form as the word Yahweh Elohim. And then what? Then manifest in a physical body. In other words, once he comes into this super incorporeal shape and form, then that is, that is the description of all this back here. It's right here. So it says now, in John 17, is 1 says what? These were... Go ahead, go ahead. Great place. These words spake Yahshua. Uh huh. And lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Uh huh. Father, Read. the hour is come. The hour is come. Glorify thy son. Uh huh. That thy son also may glorify thee. Read, please. As thou hast given him power over all flesh. Power over all flesh. Read. That he should give eternal life to as many. That he should give eternal life to as many. As thou hast given him. As thou hast given him. Well then, what is eternal life? Read. And this is life eternal. <laughs> now he said, and this is, and that's the one thing that the church world couldn't answer. And they still can't answer. What is eternal life? But it's right there where? In the book. And it's given by Yahshua himself, right. who the world called Jesus Christ. So you don't have to take my word for it. He's telling you what it is. He said, this is life eternal. Read. That they may know thee. That they might know thee, Father. Read. The 
only true Elohim. That you, Father, is the only true Elohim, read. And Yahshua the Messiah. And Yahshua the Messiah, whom, whom thou hast sent. That's the oneness. That's the oneness. And everything that the previous vessel shared with us was to show us that unity, that oneness, and how everything is like this connected dots. Connect the dot. So everything up here on this chart will be doing what? The same thing. We have a death. We have a burial. We have a resurrection and ascension. Witness by what? We got the blood. We got the water. We got the spirit. And we got the 40. Everything. What? Why you said it? Because here we come. You know, when a woman is pregnant and have a baby, it takes nine months. You said, what? I was born seven months. We're talking about normal. Right. Nine months, 40 weeks in the womb, okay? 40 weeks, nine months, here you come. Have a show of blood, have the water, and then you take in the breath of life. Everything is still going according to their what? One, two, three, yet one. Blood, water, spirit, 40 weeks in the womb. That's, that's what we are. That's what's going on. So now, everything that's going on and what we had to... to bring off to you was well where did y'all get that from I never read that but the previous lesson said what the law and the prophets so let's go over to the law the, the Exodus 25 and go down to 8 verse let's start at 1 and then we'll go down a little bit and y'all always speak it to Moses. Say. Okay, so hold it. So now we talk about how Yahweh took Moses up here in this mountain and gave him a stupendous divine vision, you see, of this tabernacle pattern. So here you have, it said, and Yahweh spake <coughs> unto Moses. Now, prior to that, you have in Exodus, the third chapter, it said, and Yahweh spake unto Moses. He gave him his name, right? So now he's given him the pattern of the tabernacle. Right. This is what you have. This is what you have. <coughs> Everything that's here. We talk about them being out here in the wilderness. Read, please. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, uh -huh. that they bring me an offering. Now, he said that they bring me an offering, read, of every man that giveth it willingly, mm -hmm. with his heart, ye shall take my offering. Okay, read, please. And, I, um, and I'm, uh, let me see. Read them all, please. I may have time. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them, uh -huh. gold uh -huh. and silver and brass, mm -hmm. and blue and purple and scarlet, and fine linen, and goat's hair, and ram skin dyed red. And badger skin and shittim wool. All for the lights. Okay, hold up. Gold, silver, brass, mm -hmm. blue, purple, and scarlet linen. Uh huh. Goat's hair. Uh huh. Ram skin. Dyed red. Uh huh. And the badger skin. Uh huh. And shittim wool. Wood. Mm hmm. All for the light. Mm hmm. Spices for the anointing. Mm -hmm. And for the sweet incense. Okay, for sweet incense. That's yes, fine. We're going to pick up nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eight. Okay. Well, what, what I wanted to pick up was these nine divine principal substances that they was going to bring. Okay? In the previous lesson, we talked about this physical body. You got nine, what? Major systems mm -hmm. in the body, right? Mm -hmm. You got Yahweh having these nine divine attributes. Now, there are many, many more. Okay, but we talk about how these nine divine attributes take on a descriptive shape and form, right? Read, please. Onyx stone. Uh huh. And stones to be set in the ephod. Read, please. And in the breastplate. We don't. And let them make me a sanctuary. Now, sensuary. once they bring this offering, he said, now let them make me a sanctuary. For what reason? That I may dwell among them. That's where we are. He said, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. After the pattern of the tabernacle, after the instruments thereof, even shall you make it. He said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Okay? So now, what you have is, you, and people say, well, 
uh, tell me something about God. You made in his image and after his likeness, but you didn't know that. Now you know how. Why? Because you got a head cabin, you got a chest cabin, you got a dominant cabin. These three are one. You got a most holy place, you got a holy place, and a court roundabout. Everything that about you correlates. And that's what the previous vessel was doing, was bringing it, it said these pillows, bars, and boards in the tabernacle over here. So it said man by the pattern. And you said the bone structure of a man represents pillars, bars, and boards in the tabernacle. So you have this as a guide to help you to see, know, and understand your creator the way he really is and actually exists. We're not just throwing stuff out here for you, but these are the things that have Yahshua have given unto us since being in attendance at class. And one of the things we want you to do is be mindful of how you go and work with this, you know, because it is a prescribed way mm -hmm. that he have given us to go into these things and to share with you. But it says, now look, when he was talking to them about bringing their offering, he said that was of a what? A willing heart. Yeah. A willing heart. Nobody's going to take a gun and hold it to your head and say, well, you just end up because... Is to them or to those that he have given to see, know, and understand him the way he really is and actually exists. And when you when it was reading over there in 1 John, where it talks about in 1 John 5 and 7, and uh, 1 John uh, 5 and 19. Let's read that and I'll be down because the whole thing is, is we want you to really see. A reality and you learning about your creating truth and reality and the vessel presented so many examples for us it is said just like Romans 1 19 and 20 that you will be without excuse for not knowing your creator you know even when you look at a blade of grass and when it first come up you know all of these things you look at seeds and my sister was trying to plant some seeds for something but she didn't let them die <laughs> you know, and, and the things that we planted is already up and in fruition, and the stuff she planted, now she said, I got to plant them again. You know, trying to get around something have to die in order for you to live. Right. So when you eat food, that egg, that bacon, something die in order for you to live. Mm -hmm. So you take that as a Romans 1, 19 and 20. Yahshua died in order for you to live. Exactly. That's what it's all about. That you needed a Savior and He had to die for you in order for you to have life eternal. Read, please. Come on, come on. And we know that we are of And God. we know. We're not guessing. We know that we are of Yahweh. How do we know that? Read. And the whole world lies. The whole world lieth in wickedness. Read. And we know that. The and we know. All of the evidence that's been presented to you, you've got to come to a conclusion that they know something. And we know, read, that the Son of Yahweh, that is, the Son of Yahweh is come in you, in present tense. Read. And have given us an understanding. And the reason how you know is because he has, it's already, he has given you an understanding. Read. That we may know him. That, that you might know him that is true. Read. And we are in him that is and true. And that we are in him that is true. Even in his son. Even in his son, Yahshua the Messiah. This is the true Elohim and eternal life. But it also says, little children, <laughs> keep yourselves from idols. <laughs> you see, keep yourself from idols. I hope that something has been said just to stir up your pure mind and give you that innate desire to just want to know it for yourself. You know, there's no pressure in anything, but to know something for yourself is concrete, is basic, and it's simple. And with those words, I do say hallelujah and thank you for your time. This concludes our lecture for today. Let us stand for our doxology. Our doxology oh. is taken from Jude, <laughs> verse 24, 25. Now unto him that's able to keep you from falling 
and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.